Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Atlas Survival Shelters. I hope everyone's having a fantastic day. You know what I love most about my job, other than getting to build and install bomb shelters, how cool is that, is getting to visit old bomb shelters from the Cold War era. So in today's video, we're going to go back and visit a 1960 Atlas E missile silo and this thing is cool guys so I hope you enjoy the video hey guys don't forget to like and subscribe and turn on that indicator bell so you get noticed when my videos come in because a lot of you tons of you are telling me you're not getting the notification so hit that little indicator bell and boom you'll get my weekly videos guys I'll see you at the end Closer to the property now. This is what's around it. It's not much, just uh, farm fields. So we have arrived off a of county road here onto a gravel road. I guess that's the missile silo back over there. Technically, you can land a small airplane on this. It's like a mile and a half long strip. It's kind of narrow, but you could do it if you're a good pilot. It's pretty out here. Look at those hills over there. Those are real pretty. if it's part of the property or not. And there's the house that's on top of it. Oh wow, look at that. You can drive right into it, cool. All right, so I arrived here at this Atlas E. So what year was this built in? I believe it was built in 58 or 60. It was built in 58 or 60? Yeah, there was a bunch of them built. It was between, I think, 58 and 61 or something like that before they decommissioned them all. So you can get to the bunker from that house? Yes, from uh, from like a pantry door in the kitchen. You open it up. Oh, are there. we going to get oh, to yeah, see that? Everything, everything. Guys, I'm not going to put him on camera. He wants to stay anonymous, but he's going to give us the tour. There's the escape hatch. You can see... So that's the original escape hatch. Yeah. That thing's uh, 60 something years old. Yeah. And yeah. it still looks good. Yeah. Still yeah. Opens and Look at that galvanizing. So if anyone says uh, they don't want to galvanize parts of their bunker, they're an idiot because <laughs> that's how you make it to where it lasts 100 something, 150 yeah, years. Absolutely. All right. It's like a little entry, entryway foyer. Oh, okay. Everything parents lived here and they know they're living elsewhere now so I okay. get the joys of cleaning everything and, uh, so of course this is included with the bunker <laughs> of course yes two bathrooms uh, not a full bath but you know a toilet and the other bedroom I bet you know 200 years ago there must have been a lot of buffalo here yeah because these beautiful rolling hills Okay, so this is the pantry door that leads down to the bunker. Yes, sir. Okay. Category 1, restricted area. It's unlawful to enter this area with the authority of the base commander. Area is patrolled by armed guards. Who, did you build this wood staircase? Yeah. Okay. The only thing between us and the surface right now is that concrete. Yeah. How thick is that concrete? Uh, I think they were two foot. Reinforced rebar and, and I don't know, 20,000 PSC. 
desires. Yeah, 20,000 pounds. It's very hard, but two foot of concrete will shield you from the gamma radiation. So now, what room is this here? This used to be the kind of generators, these two pads that I've cut down and re to level the floor out. They were, uh, they were to power in case there was no power uh, to the facility. There was stuff running in and out. I've kind of closed most of that off. Uh, they had... Uh, wow, look at that big vent. Yeah, those are the ones up top. Is that what brought the air in? Yeah, yeah. That thing's like five foot diameter. Yep, you can crawl up in there. Really? Yeah, very easy. So what's the total square foot of the bunker? Uh, I believe it's 15,000 square feet. 15,000 square feet. That is so cool. So that's the another air in right there? Yeah, the air in was the air out. Wow. I did a bunker a couple of weeks ago and I put eight inch air pipes and I felt like that was big, but that's just gigantic. <laughs> but you've got to have a lot of air come in to supply enough air to you know, feed the generators, uh, let the people breathe. I've got it set up towards a sub pump and it just pumps out any water from washing, you know, the floors or if you want to pressure wash or whatever to get it yeah. uh, cleaned up. That's what I used it for. And then that pump pumps out the water right out. So How cold is it down here? It's pretty it, cool. Uh, yeah, it stays about 50 year round. It does 50, even yeah, in the winter? Even in the winter, yeah. Maybe, maybe 45, but it never freezes. Yeah, yeah, but a, a sweater. See, I could wear a sweater right now. It's that cold and it's summer. I got well, the two pumps, the two pump houses, A and B, one's on one side, one's on the other. They're connected. Well, this yeah. is, that looks to be about 50, 60 feet wall right there, and that's probably 75. So it might be 4,000. Now it's probably about 4,000 square feet right here. Well, this is cool. All right, now where does it lead to? Uh, I'm gonna walk around here. I'll start turning some of the lights on. Most of the lights are going to be up there, probably, right? Okay. So it looks like you were framing this out. Yeah, we were. We were uh, working on it with my dad. And, like, you know, I don't have much time, but whatever I had, I devoted. But they're they're not staying here no more. And kind of kind of done with it. But the that was one bedroom there. Here's another bedroom. These have what like. 16 foot ceilings, 14 foot ceilings. Yeah, uh, I think they're 16 feet. That's tall. That's probably the original paint right there. It's fun going through these old bunkers. I've been doing a lot of these videos, you know? Yeah. Going back to AT&T bunkers and Titan missile silos. So yeah. this is my first Atlas E. Well, this is more of the cream of de la creme. It's the easiest to retrofit. There's no big pits to fill up. There's not no stairs. I mean, very minimal. I mean, there's, you know, the stairs going up to the structure, but yeah. got another closet. The same thing going on yeah. here with the double decker. Um, this closet over here, same deal. Yeah. Got their, uh, <laughs> little survival stuff they were living here up till a couple years ago oh really yeah yeah it's got the same trap door up there but this one's a, yeah. a little smaller of a crawl space up there because we're left left this is where the computer's sat so for the, for the launch yeah for the launch this launch was the launch room. room no just the computers i believe they had the the room in there that was that room and that room I think was like a conference area and then of course the generators and the batteries and everything was all laid out. Cool. So you got uh, 200 amps uh, or actually 400 amps coming in but this is 200 amps and then it strings up and it feeds the panel inside. Did the they house. add all this power or? Yeah we had to put all the power and there was nothing here. So that's just the panel just to this room here. Yeah, to the basement and then the, the other four inch pipe goes to What the do you call this room? The basement. The basement. Yeah. All right, so part one, guys, is the basement. All right, so where are we going now? Uh, this is a little, a little pantry. Kind of this is some of the original handrails. I like the original yes, stuff. that's the original stuff. Yeah. Except the plumbing that's added yeah. to get the water out. Okay, oh wow. Oh, now we're getting, oh, there's the tunnel. Yeah, a little yeah. closet space for whatnot. Now, I got it set up to where I can walk and the lights will shut off the motion oh, detectors. Oh, okay. And then I also have it set up if you hit the switch. Yeah. 
they all light up, the ones that aren't burnt out. <laughs> this is, I guess, eight foot diameter pipe, but it's been filled with some concrete. And this is what's called multi-plate. See how it's bolted together? This stuff's very expensive. Only the military can usually afford this or city government. But the thing is with this, it's filled with concrete on the oh, outside. Yeah. yeah, otherwise it would leak like a sift. But, uh, all right, let's go. Uh, I think the tunnel's uh, like 100 feet or 89 feet, something like that. Oh, it's 100 feet. Um, yeah. I rolled, you know, fridges rolled in, just barely kind of watched the nuts on the top, but they fit. Hey. Now we're walking up at a uh, little bit of a slope, Yeah. but it would, it would be handicap accessible because of the slope. Yeah, yeah this is handicap true. accessible right here. This is the original concrete too. That is so cool. And then of course we got this going on. Oh wow. And uh, we're gonna have to unlock that guy from around the side. I okay. Up, but... Now where's this one go to? Right on the side where that big door was. Oh okay. Alrighty, that's cool. Alright. So the, oh this is the garage you can Yeah. So this is the workshop part of it. This would be a super cool bunker. I mean it's so big. People can live out their whole lives down here. Wow. This is neat. Again, you got about 14 to 16 foot ceilings in here. Now what are all these batteries? Uh that wasn't a uh, system. If it's not operational, you'd have to fill it, refill it, probably get the batteries cleaned up. How old are these batteries? Uh, about five years old. Really? Yeah. Are they still good, do you think? I uh, probably are. I haven't had time to mess with them because, like I said, my dad didn't really take care of anything, so I had to, you know, just disarm the stuff. But it's two outback inverters. We got the two sky screens that are powering or adding, you know, to the grid. Um, I did have it all shut off from the grid running on the batteries, but uh, Pops isn't really technical technically savvy so I had to disarm it but that's a 400 amp service and then the the, the two outback outback inverters I think it was like six or seven thousand watts um, the sky screens are 2.5 each um, had it rigged up to where the after the battery bank would be full I had heaters on the wall to where it would dissipate the extra charge so I wouldn't overcharge my batteries then we have a, I think it's a 25 oh. kW. Uh, and that is exhausted to the surface. Yes, that is exhausted to the surface. And that other candy cane was cut off on the surface to put this uh, sky. Oh, it's got to be clean, but it's the sunlight. I've seen people put in generators and they have the exhaust going to the inside. That's not good, man. <laughs> that will kill everybody. Yeah. That would yeah. Kill you. And but, not uh, even know, you just feel tired. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Well, you have carbon monoxide and carbon dioxide detectors. Right. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Now, what, what do you call this area? Um, this is basically the shop. Just the shop? Yeah, the shop. And then built this little room for some more of my parents' storage and stuff. But Well, this bunker, well, I see all this food in here. Wow, it's some old food, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. I'm going to have to start getting rid of some of that stuff. But, you know, if you open it up, your nose, your nose will tell you if it's good or not, right? <laughs> yeah. Well, the moisture down here has got a little bit of rust or mold on it. Right. Yeah, it's cold in here though. I'll say one thing. Yeah, for sure. I think it's. Uh, so how old do you think this food is? It's fifty-five, fifty-six. Um, no, how? It's, it's it's been probably ten years worth. My mom really? used to you know buy it and store it and. And it got looking like this just yeah. from sitting down here. Yeah. Huh. This will give some people watching this video some thoughts. Guys, comment below what you think about this food sitting here. Uh, more food. Okay, so this is the shop. Yep, back to the shop. So the batteries, you have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. You got 16 batteries. Yeah, it was a 48 volt system. Is this what those windmills are charging? Uh, they were, yeah. Okay, so it's off, yeah. Yeah, but I, I've reworked it with uh, to where it's just on the grid because I'm not here. I should power everything down and the windmills just feed the grid. So there's three sources of power here. He's hooked up to the grid right now. 
He's got his diesel, and that's a 25 kilowatt? Yeah. 25 kilowatt diesel generator. And then his other redundancy is the batteries with the windmills. So the windmills are a good idea. Yeah, yeah, they do help. I mean, my parents were paying with the windmills here and my dad leaving all the lights on and stuff all the time. Wow. They were paying like 80 bucks a month. Really? Now I'm banking hours. I had like 2,000 or 3,000 hours. So it's, you know, free power. The wind, they don't pay you at the end of the year as much yeah. as they charge you, but it's a little, you know, a little something. So where are all these supplies? This is uh, my parents' stuff. It's, now, are you just selling the bunker with all the food and supplies, just leaving it here? Yeah, yeah, I mean, I, I just, just assume, I mean, I'll take whatever I want, but the rest is gonna be probably left behind. Um, another little section, I don't know what you call it, but- put yeah, it's dark in here, here, I'm sorry. It takes a little bit before the lights yeah. actually That's warm cool. up. All right, got a little trench here. Yeah, there's trenches running in. How does the uh, plumbing work here? Um, Plumbing is normal. Uh, yeah, yeah, upstairs are flushing toilets. Down here, the toilets aren't bolted on, but I do have a pump, a chop, two inch chop pump, and that's been all set up. It's, I can, yeah, we missed that going in, but that's actually the ejection, sewer ejection pump for down in the basement area. Uh, there is no toilet or nothing in this garage or shop area. I noticed, okay, this was a door and then you busted it wider? No, this is how it was when I got it. Really? Yeah, wonder why they did that. They that used had, to be a door. They, they, I think they had a, a repair shop, a trailer repair shop. Yeah. And get the trailers and the trucks over, they, they uh, took the liberty of leaving the door way a little bit. It's so the roof that would slide oh. over into that section and then the missile would get erected. Okay, so the missile would back into here. Yeah. The roof would slide over, the missile would stand up and fire off. Exactly. Did you know that 15% of them blew up in the silo? Oh yeah, they would blow up right here. They, they had a high, uh, high percentage of failures. I know that one <coughs> side was oxygen and one side was the rocket fuel and all the bolts on one side were square and all the bolts on the other were round. So this was a vehicle that could back in here, yeah. Oh yeah, a whole truck would back in. Wow. Does that roof still open? No, it's been covered with uh, with dirt and stuff. I want to see that roof. How thick is the concrete on that? Uh, we can go up top, but I don't know. You see those I beams up there? I started making all my modular bunkers with I beams. Now you can see what they did there. Those are uh, those are about some 18 to 24 inch I beams, and uh, they're about four foot on center. I'm using wide flange I beams at two foot on center. Wow. Yeah, yeah. So you can drive a tank on top of mine. So what else you got over here? Oh, that's the blast pit. So when the when the flames would yeah. shoot out. Yep, would shoot out. Oh wow, how cool is that? Oh, so much history here. You see the circle for the oxygen on the one wall and the square for the uh, rocket fuel. Or oh, okay, and they would mix the two together and then yeah. it would take off. Yeah. yeah. Wow. How many of these uh, atlases were built in the country? Uh, I believe twenty-one. Seven in the in the Kansas area, seven in the Washington uh, Yakima area, and then uh, seven that were built here in the Wyoming and Colorado area. This just a little side, little side thing. If this was a bunker, this would be a big bunker just by itself. It's more of a catch-all, I guess. <laughs> material. Now, what kind of doors does this building here, here have? Uh, this is the 40 ton blast door. Or the so this was made to withstand a blast and raise its missile and fire? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's the door. That is the door. And does it still close? Yeah, well I got it working now. Here we go, this is that, wow. Look at that. 40 tons? Yeah. Holy cow. Now that's pretty fast, actually. That's quiet, too. Will it go all the way? Yeah, it will go all the way. I don't want to jam it in. Oh, okay. I got you. All right, go ahead and open it. Opening a 40 ton door on an Atlas E missile silo. 
You don't see this every day on YouTube. It goes 40 tons. Cool. Wow. Go ahead and open it. Now let's say I'm a, a, a bunch of uh, looters or whatever. How hard would it be to get through this? Get through this. You're not getting through it? No. Okay, so it's made out of uh, steel. Is it filled with concrete or what? No, it's just made out of, made out of steel, thick steel. Wow. So how see? thick is this door? It's about, it's about 18 inches thick. Double, double sided. I wish we had a gun, we could shoot it. <laughs> and how do you open and operate it? Uh, open, close, off is the middle by this switch. That's it? Yep. Bring something up. I mean, this thing will last another 50 years. And then, of course, this side thing. Here's uh, some runoffs. I got tires keeping the dirt and stuff out of there. Now, is this this great can't be from 1958? Yeah, yeah. It is? Yeah, yeah. Dude, it looks Gal brand new. Galvanized great, yeah. Wow. That's amazing how well galvanizing will preserve things, you know? Yeah, way better, way better than paint. Wow. There's a little bit of stain right there. But after 60 years, yeah. that's nothing. God, that impresses me. Uh, you know, I galvanize as much as I can on my bunkers. I wish I could galvanize it all. Right. But guys, that's why you want galvanized parts in your bunker. <laughs> They'll just last forever. And you want this bunker to be here in 50 years in case we don't need it. During our generation, your kids or your grandkids can, might need this bunker one day. So the way our country's going, we probably won't have an America in 10 years. Okay, so we got another door over here. Now, what is this? The side door earlier on when you were like, if you walk in there, you walk into the small tunnel, and then if you hang a right, you walk back down into the into the basement. So how would they normally enter this bunker through this door here? Um, you, as you can see, that door, this blast door, if you want to leave it open or up on top of the, the house, and then you would walk down through the basement. Well, it's still, it's AR. It's about a three-inch thick door. These doors are old. They're cool. You can see where they've welded stuff on them. So you got, okay, you see just like my bunkers, you see you have two doors. You got one door, then you go through a second door, just like I do in my Atlas shelters. And then you got a tunnel that you go up through. And then you turn left or right, and there's your 90 degree turn which will help you attenuate radiation. Double doors. One door. And then a second door, just like every Atlas shelter I've made. We're in a, one of the Atlas survival shelters. We're gonna go through the decontamination room here. The platinum series they actually have two doors and then they have a third door that goes into the generator room so it's uh so it protects you from the carbon monoxide and the methane gas in case there's trash or dead bodies out there wow this is cool let's go up top check it
those things spin, don't they? They're loud. I mean, not too loud. I mean, but you just you can hear that they're generating power. Totally cool. All right, so the third, there's about 10 acres and fenced on the actual silo, but there's 30 acres here total, and it goes out to the barbed wire fence that's out there another 100 yards beyond that fence. It goes all the way around and all the way over here. So that's the total of 30 acres. The little drive, the L drive, uh, when you when you entered in from the from the crossway that yeah. was there, that's also part of the part of the land we're going in. So the windmills are cranking, but they're not charging nothing. No, they're char they're charging back to the grid. Oh, are they really? Oh, that's why you got all the hours built up. Yeah, I have a pad that I poured here, and it's got drains where where the bucket is, and that's connected to the septic. But I've never. I was gonna extend this little section out. Now that's what I want to see. That is the air pipe. That's the air coming in, or the air going out. Uh, that one I think is the air going out. And I say a four or five foot diameter it's the same size as down yeah in there and it's, just 90 bucks. it's got the screen in there keep their mat the mice out that's the original roof oh yeah that's all original galvanized again this is why i galvanize my air pipes i keep mentioning it but look at that 60 something years old and it's still in good shape the only thing that's showing some wear and tear or the actual screws and those could be replaced but the actual galvanizes in great shape a little bit on the edge but that thing's good for another 75 years easy easy yeah brass, well brass filler that's where they filled the diesel for the generators down, down okay down. all right so that's how they get the the diesel down to the fuel yeah, tank so how big a generators did the original bunker have it was two of them and i'm not quite exactly sure now what are all these things this is the skylight that went down there from the bottom in the basement. This is something you added? Yeah, There's, you know, in case you need to get down there and do a little something before, the, you know, had no light, that would help you a little bit, a light down there. Huh. Um, had dish network and stuff, it's all run into the house. Um, they also buried fiber, fiber, I think, up to that pole, the electrical pole on, the, on my side of the fence. And then from here on in, I think it's just cat six or whatever they give you, but. How many acres do you have here? Uh, it's close to 30 acres. Where, are those hills on it? Uh, no, these hills are not on it. Those are the bluffs. They, I think the state owns those, but um, the fence and then past the fence, there's the barbed wire fence. Mm -hmm. That barbed wire fence is the end of mine. Okay, what was on that concrete thing right there? That was just a spray pond. That was the water we talked about to cool the generators and stuff. They would pump it and they'd spray it up in, as a fountain and then the cold water would come back, sucked into the pipe and cool those generators some more. Wow. And what's in that house over there? That's the pump house um, A, and that's the pump house B. Where's it? Oh, oh over there? Yeah, yeah. All right, yeah. so, and what do they do now? Uh, they pump water to the facility. Oh, really? Um, where we'll go in. So there. this has its yeah. own well. Oh, it's got two wells. Both of those pump houses sit on 1,000 foot wells. Pipe drop to 300 feet, and I never get, you know, I, I always have water, so. Oh, there's the other air pipe right yes, there. That's the other air pipe. So right one there. is air in, and the other's air out. Exactly. Yeah, but see how big they are. And you got that big old. Uh, what's this pipe over here? I see. Uh, that one. I believe that was fresh air intake. You would. All right. So this is air intake on that. Uh, yeah. Probably yeah. a 16 inch pipe, and they have big blowers in there. Oh yeah. Yeah, they had big blowers that have been disassembled and taken out, but yeah, they had big blowers. Wow. And uh, the concrete uh, square that's like a junction box it's no longer used for anything um i ran you know my own pipes and my own stuff so how close is the next missile silo uh, i don't know i think they were within what within 30 miles or something like that 60 miles of do you know time. where it's at uh, I think there's one in Kimball, Kimball, Nebraska. All right, so all this stuff's original, except for the windmills? Yeah, we put the windmills in. And they're hooked up to the grid. And they're hooked up to the grid right now. Wow, you got good wind out here. Oh yeah, they're cranking. Nonstop. What are those little roosts and all these air pipes over here? Uh, those were intakes and stuff for the garage area. Okay, so this is the exhaust for the uh, generator? Yeah, there was exhaust, not for this. 
that's, that's yeah. in there. The that six inch air pipe, that's the same size pipe we use on my bunkers today for my small bunkers. And this is a big bunker. <laughs> that's another skylight. Yeah, that's another skylight above the generator in case you needed to turn it on. No power or whatnot. You had a little light. Well, that's original stuff right there. Yeah. That's amazing how well, how good a shape it's in. Well, you got to see how thick it is too. I mean, that's not. Yeah, but there's this galvanized sheet metal here. And the galvanized definitely keeps it preserved, keeps it good. Oh, God, yeah. So the air pipes weren't galvanized. I guess these ones were painted. They could be galvanized. They might just have paint over them. I can't imagine they're not galvanizing them. I don't know. But a little screen on the bottom of them now this one over here that's about a that's about a 10 inch pipe right there yeah got a nice stainless steel mess on there both of them do you know what's amazing is so much of this stuff feels like my bunkers you know and how i do it you know i mean guys you don't have to reinvent the wheel okay i mean they had it right 60 years ago you just got to keep producing it come up with some new technology but the basic principles is still the same today as it was back then and that's how i do it okay so we're coming up on the roof yeah this would be the roof so dirt is built up on top of it but this used to have no dirt on it. It was just solid concrete. Yeah, it was solid concrete, and the thing would slide into the con other concrete. Well, technically, it still could if it had to. If it had to, I guess. Yeah, there's no need for it to. Uh, uh, probably a lot of, I think it was all oil pneumatics and stuff, that, that actuators that locked and unlocked and, and actually stood the tube. Well, that thing is spinning away. What brand uh, fans are those? Uh, they're used in the sky screen. Really? Sky screams? Yeah, sky screams. There sure is a lot of ventilation on top. Here's a blower. Yeah, that works. Now what does this do? I turn, I turn that on. It just gives, gets a shot of shot of fresh air through the place. And it's in the back. And it still it? works? Yeah, it still works. That's crazy. Well, they don't make things like that anymore, do they? These old, is that probably a ball door motor? It's Westinghouse. Oh, Westinghouse. There you go. I used to be a good... And it still works. Company. Even sitting outside with electric motor it still works. It's amazing. So there, there's a door there and it would slide open and when the rocket would launch from right here, the flames would come out over there. Yeah, it's got a ramp going up. It 90s it up. Like wow. That's so cool. We're going to drive over and see what's at the pump station. So uh, curiosity always killed the cat. So let's go see what's in the... Uh, Pump station. It's pretty. I like those hills. But that's state yeah. property yeah, right there. State property. You call those the bluffs. Where you ride it? You have a four wheeler. You ride over there. Yep. Yeah. All right. So you got two pump stations. Now these are the two wells. Two thousand feet. You got a small pump in there now. But they. Had, oh, okay. They had bigger units. And these are working now. Yeah, they all work. Is the other one working? Yep, the other one's working. It's got a bigger storage tank. And this is the original room? Yep. You know what they used in there? Pressure treated wood. See how well that wood is? Now that looks like not, looks like you added that, but. Yeah, that's the way to put the, pull the pump in and out. Yeah. So you yeah. gotta cut a hole in there. Yeah, but the, other than that, it looks like pressure treated wood. Then you got a little generator in here too. There's your, so what, uh, how many amp service you have? 50 amps. 50 amp service. And it's 70, 70 degrees in here. All right, well now they know it's in the pump station and then the other one's identical to it? Yep, identical to it. And that's all the way over there. Cool. Now this gate closed? Yeah. That's how I lock it open. No, it's not electric or nothing. No, no, the electric's not working. I was catching, but there's The actual bunker almost covers an acre. I'm good. I'm good. Alrighty.
So guys, I hope you enjoyed today's video. Now guys, if you're interested in purchasing the shelter, it is available for sale. Uh, make your offer. The gentleman wants a lot of money for it, but you know what, make your offer. But guys, if you're wanting to start a prepper group, you know, you could get two, 300 people in that bunker super easy. It's big at 15,000 square feet. Yeah, that would be a good project for a prepper group. But guys, if you're interested, I will put a link below to the gentleman, send him an email, and uh, make your offer. So guys, I hope you enjoyed today's video. As always, I love you. I'll see you on the next video.